So uh, I am Dr. G. Narasimha, Associate Professor in uh, Coiral Department. So my research area including uh, microbial uh, applied microbiology aspects like microbial enzymes, then the biosynthesis of nanoparticles, characterization, bioactive compounds, purification, like that. I have more than uh, 25 years of research and teaching experience uh, in microbiology and applied micro microbiology and nanotechnology field. So today my topic is biosynthesis of silo nanoparticles characterization and their applications in, application as a antimicrobial and antiviral agent. Because the nowadays uh, the nanotechnology one of the multidisciplinary subject and widely spread it into various fields. So the, because I am a virology faculty, so what the, I am doing some of the work related to nanoparticles also like biosynthesis of cell and nanoparticles, characterization, and their antimicrobial activities. So about our university, let me introduce about our university. Our university is Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. So this university established in 1954. The university has now grown into the second largest university in Andhra Pradesh. So it has more than 54 departments offering 78 programs. The university recognized as one of the best universities in the country and got accreditation A plus grade by NAC in 2017. About our department, so the virology department is unique department in uh, AP. So the virology department was established in 1988 with the Professor M. Naidu as a founder. The, this is one of the unique department all of the universities in India, so which offer the MSc and PhD programs in virology. The faculties of the virology working on various fields like applied microbiology, biotechnology, plant virus, diseases, microbial engines, and other like uh, nano uh, particles and VLPs, some are there like for doing like that also. Then uh, about the introduction about the nanotechnology. So how this nanotechnology is useful in the virology field? Now I'm going to explain about the, the nanotechnology and virology and the, some of the applications of nanoparticles in virology viruses, how it, we are going to reduce the uh, symptoms of the viruses and eradicate the viruses. First of all, what is the nanotechnology? So nanotechnology involves in the study and use of the extremely very small substances called nanoparticles. A nanometer is 10 to 4 of many, 9 meters, that is 1 millions of the millimeter. Nanoparticles are the clusters of the atoms in the size ranges from 1 to 100 nanometer. The nanoparticles contains the a, a, a particular chemical, physical, optical, and mechanical properties. So the nanoparticle have been the great scientific values since they came to the reduce the gap between the bulk materials and the molecular structures. Particularly the silo nanoparticles are the most attractive due to the high surface area by volume ratio. The surface of the nanoparticles are very small and so important and uh, should be controlled since the change in the size. When the particle reaches size between the 1 to 100 nanometer, their properties also different at the particularly electrical, chemical, and physical levels. So it is evident that the properties are directly related to the size and shape of the nanoparticle. The nanoparticle size and shape are controlled achieved by the various properties like the temperature, redox potential, and, and color and conductivity meter. Conductivity also. You can see the, the nanoparticle size, like uh, starting from the units of the nanometers, like uh, glucose and antibody, virus, bacteria, and cancers, like tennis ball, which having the different size of the nanoparticles. And this is also scale of the things of the nanometer, like uh, you can see the nanoparticles with different ranges, like one, uh, zero, uh, one nanometer, two nanometer, even up to 100 nanometer also. So very small nanometer, even, uh, like 3 nanometer to 5 nanometer nanoparticles also we synthesized in our lab. So even DNA and RNA, even some of the viruses are having the different nanometers. Then this is the applications of the nanotechnology. Where, because the, the nanotechnology, the widespread and multidisciplinary subject, it has very good applications, including like biotechnology, like nano security, uh, national security, food and agriculture, medicine, aerospace, energy, advanced materials, then information technology. So, so many aspects, so many fields, the nanotechnology is spread into various uh, uh, fields, including like uh, nanotechnology also widely useful in the medicine also. For example, in medicine, like wound or uh, dressing of the wounds, the water filtration, devices, paints, cosmetics, and coating and lubricants, textiles, 
then uh, tissue engineering, then ma medical diagnostics, displays, sensors, drug delivery, composite materials, and solid lightning, biomaterial, like that. So like, even information technology like memory storage, then novel uh, optical electronic devices and displays also. Then uh, heavy industry also, the nanoparticles are widely using in the catalyst as a catalyst, then construction of vehicle and manufacturers also. Even consumers' goods, they like food and packaging, textile and cosmetics also. This nanoparticle like metallic, uh, non-metallic particles are widely using uh, for the one of the very important uh, uh, agents for the particularly antimicrobial and antiviral agents also. In, even in, in sensors also, like uh, detection of the pollutants, the, uh, in the uh, uh, we can detect any pollutant in the water and uh, uh, even uh, on the veg on the surface of, surface of the vegetables also we can detect with the help of the nanomaterials then uh, other applications like food and drinks then energy cosmetics and even sports also wide applications are there like uh, later i can uh, can see the, some of the applications then history because various nanoparticles are nowadays available for example metallic and non-metallic nanoparticles metallic nanoparticle like uh, silver gold platinum palladium like that metallic nanoparticle non-metallic nanoparticle like uh, uh, calcium then uh, zinc like that you know, various non-metallic particles are uh, widely nowadays using and we are uh, going to synthesize the various methods because the, now we are choosing the silver silver is a very simple eco-friendly method it is also metallic nanoparticle because the silver has very uh, wide right history. The for centuries, silver has been in use for the treatment of the wounds. As early in 1000 BC, silver was used to make water portable. In 1970, silver nitrate was used for the treatment of the diseases. In the 19th century, granulation tissue were removed using the silver nitrate to allow the epithelialization and promote the fresh formation of the surface of the wounds. Then in 1940, after penicillin was introduced, the, because this is wonder drug, no? penicillin is it is one of the antibiotics, so produced from the penicillium notatum fungi. This is called the broad spectrum of antibiotic. Various diseases were cured even with the help of the penicillin. Uh, but instead of the penicillin, nowadays even uh, you can use the silver nitrate also widely used. Silver for the treatment of the bacterial infections is minimized. Recently, due to the emergency of the antibiotic resistant bacteria and the limitations of the use of the antibiotic, the clinicians were uh, uh, returned to the silver wound dressing also. Because the antibiotics, once if you use the antibiotic, no, we can't eat retain because uh, but it is soluble in the water or the body system. But the nanoparticles are the resistant, the so not soluble. We can reuse, we can prepare in the films or immobilized cells also. We can reuse the nanoparticles because the, nowadays even multi-degree resistant also microorganisms are very important uh, things in nowadays. One of the because uh, usage of the num uh, the uh, antibiotics number of times there may be chances for the development of the multi-degree resistant bacteria. But the antibiotics they may in future it may not work out. But in but in uh, use of the nanoparticles we can minimize we can control the even. Uh, multi resistant bacteria or microorganisms with the help of these nanoparticles. So that is the importance of the nanoparticles. So with the help of the nanoparticle, we can reduce the, we can minimize the some of the diseases, particularly bacterial and viral diseases and fungal diseases also. Now the biotech, bio nanotechnology has emerged up into the integration between the biotechnology and nanotechnology for the developing of the biosynthetic and environmental friendly technology for the synthesis of the nanoparticles. See the synthesis of the nanoparticles because the size and shape also very, very important. Even the how you can get the nanoparticle size and shape of, is the depend upon the controlling parameters like medium composition, like physical and chemical parameters. Like controlling parameters are like uh, uh, pH, temperature, concentration of the uh, medium or substrate, the exposure of the time. The medium temperature also very, very important. pH also very important for the getting of the, for the formation of the shape and the shape of the nanoparticles. Because if the nanoparticle size is very, very less, if these nanoparticles, they can pass through the pores of the bacteria or fungi. So they can integrate with the DNA and RNA and they can block the replication further the cell will be lysed. This is the one of the important, because if the size is very less, 
the antimic the nanoparticle have the more efficacy compared to the bigger size so the formation of the crystals shape and spherical also depend upon the proteins polysaccharides and organic acids present in the present in the filtrate either like a plant filtrate or bacterial filtrate because the the plant cytoplasm consisting of polysaccharide and organic acids and proteins no they can integrate they can bind with the nanoparticles so when the nanopart the this poly, uh, secondary metabolites are proteasome bound on the nanoparticle the shape of the nanoparticles also changes we can see the the different shape of the nanoparticles you can see like uh, spherical shape star shape triangle then rod shape hexagonal different different shapes are available but depend this shape also just i mentioned no the shape is mainly depend upon the the concentration of and the physical and chemical parameters of the medium and the procedure also very important time and procedure also preparation of the nanoparticles also the procedure also very important for the formation of the nanoparticles so this is the the shape of the nanoparticles from the gold nanoparticles so the precursor one is the the spherical because the spherical nanoparticle having the more surface volume compared to the other nanoparticles so it have very good efficacy antimicrobial efficacy compared to the other nanoparticles so like nano cube nano cubes then nano spoke like nano star different nanoparticles also generate originated from the the, uh, the spherical shape of the nanoparticles even you can prepare the nano powder also then now what is the advantage of the nano silver nanoparticle particularly silver nanoparticle silver nanoparticles have provided to be most effective as it is good antimicrobial efficacy against the bacteria virus and other eukaryotic microorganisms because it has the, the possibility of the high scale production long stability controlled of the active drug can be achieved avoiding of the organic solvent we can we can we can uh, prepare the uh, life -life, like a powder formation the freeze dried also you can make with the help of the uh, uh, nanoparticles the silver particularly silver nanoparticles compared to the other nanoparticles then the mechanism the what are the methods are there for the synthesis of the nanoparticles generally three methods are there only the chemical method physical method and biological methods so these methods are uh, widely used in nowadays compared to the chemical and physical method biological method is more effective and eco-friendly cost effective method so why because because the eco because very simple method one part method very simple way you can synthesize the nanoparticles for example in biological method uh, we can use the microorganisms like fungi bacteria actinobacteria as the main uh, main candidates for the synthesis of the nanoparticles like plant source we can use like uh, a leaf seed then bark roots and flowers also this is called phytosynthesis like uh, fungal mediated is called uh, fungal mediated mycosynthesis micro bacterial synthesis like that various methods are there the synthesized metal nanoparticles gained the attention as a simple and a viable alternative to the chemical and physical method even the chemical method also very simple method but uh, we can use the any reducing agent for example either sodium citrate or ascorb ascorb sodium bicarbonate tolins ray how we can use the for the synthesis of the nanoparticles we can produce the silver nano any metals any na metallic nanoparticles but only thing is agglutination and some corrosion some toxic chemicals also may formation also available uh, the, uh, it is not a cost effective compared to the chemical method a uh, physical method then even uh, the another method is there that is the physical method the physical method is like uh, micro micro oven method high temperature even laser technology also we do using for the for synthesis of the nanoparticles so compared to the the physical and chemical method the biological method is more effective simple and uh, eco friendly method for the synthesis of the uh, nanoparticles not only silver even any other nanoparticle like gold and palladium or any nano or any other uh, metallic or nano metallic particles so this method is very, very simple method and eco friendly method so uh, let me know uh, tell about the uh, some of the work done in my lab uh, for the synthesis of the silicon nanoparticles so i used the silicon nanoparticles uh, for the synthesis uh, as per well as niger this niger is widely used for the synthesis of the um, enzymes like cellulases and proteases and amylases for my work the same a niger collected isolated from the 
cotton ginning mill industries. So industrial waste, I isolated this fungus and I used it for the synthesis of the metallic silver nanoparticle. So you can see the first the the A nigger grown on the japadox medium and the medium after the growth of the fungi up, up to five to seven days, the mat entered the mat is transferred to the, the own plast which consisting of the distal water. Then the uh, incubator in you know, incubator at up to 72 hours in rotary shaker at, at uh, 121 rpm for the room temperature. After that, addition of the one millimolar of silver nitrate as a main source for the silver nanoparticles. The formation of the brown color is indication of the indication of the or presence of the nanoparticle, metallic silver nanoparticles. So next important one is the nitrate reductase assay. So generally later I will explain how this uh, nanoparticles is reduced from the AJNO3. So with the help of the enzyme nitrate reductase enzyme present in the cytoplasm of the bacteria or fungi or plants. So this is nitrate reductase assay for the conformation of the nitrate. So the enzyme nitrate reductase in the fungal uh, fungi or uh, plant extract or filtrate was assayed according to the method. So addition of the KNO3 and 5% propanol in 0.1 molar phosphate buffer, addition of the near solution, formation of the pink color is the indication of the presence of the nitrate. It is one of the indication for the presence of the nitrate. So this is the mechanism, very important one. How the nano meta, uh, silver nanoparticles is reduced from the AgNO3. So AgNO3, just I mentioned one millimolar, uh, one millimolar or 0.1 millimolar, you can take as a main substrate for the for the synthesis of the nanoparticles. For example, now I I use for the one millimolar for the synthesis of nanoparticles as uh, AgNO3. So with uh, this is the mechanism. How the AgNO3 is reduced? So with the help of an enzyme nitrate reductase enzyme it can act as a reducing agent uh, agno3 is converted to the ag plus and no3 minus further the ag plus also converted to the ag0 the possible mechanism for the synthesis of nanoparticle involved in the nadh dependent nitrate reductase enzyme in microorganisms it converted to the ag plus to the ag0 ag0 is nothing but metallic metallic or metal silver metal so through the electron shuttling mechanism so likewise, uh, in our lab, we use the mushroom also for the synthesis of the silver nanoparticle. This is called white synthesis. For this, uh, uh, we use it for the agaricus uh, biosporis was uh, for the main uh, source for the synthesis of the nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles. So a very simple way, like uh, mushrooms are collected and choked into very small pieces, then crushed in the motor and the vegetable and addition of the water up and make up to the 100 uh, ml. Later, addition of after filtration, the addition of the 1 millimolar of AgNO3 is converted into the, uh, 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 the brick red, brick brown color is the indication of the formation of the nanoparticles. The next important one is phytomediated, plant-mediated biosynthesis of silo nanoparticles. See, it is very simple, eco-friendly, cost-effective manner. It is also called as a one part method, very simple way we can synthesize the nanoparticle. We can take any plant material, even now surrounding of your area or any medicinal plant. You can use any, you can take any medicinal plant, you can take any like uh, either leaf or stem or bark or root, whatever it may be, or whole plant also you can take for the synthesis of the nanoparticles. So uh, in, our, in our lab, we use too many uh, medicinal plants for the synthesis of the nanoparticles and we tested the uh, uh, nanoparticle formation and characterized and uh, uh, tested for the various antibacterial and antifungal and antiviral activities also. So in this method, the plant leaf, we can take as a plant leaf, uh, uh, like five grams of or 10 grams of the plant leaf and uh, the uh, washed with distilled water. Then later the crushed with uh, mortar and pestle after the, uh, we have to prepare the 100 ml. And after that, after filtration, addition of the one millimolar of AgNO3 is after some time, sometimes depend upon the nature of the plant, it takes some time. Like uh, sometimes within 10 minutes, you can get the color. Uh, some plants it take uh, even uh, one hour, two hours, three hours also. Depend upon the nature of the plant, depend upon the nature of the secondary metabolites present in the filtrate of the plant. Okay, plant uh, leaf material or any material. So after incubation, we can uh, see the formation of the uh, color is indication of the 
presence of the nanoparticles. So in our lab, we, uh, we tested the nanoparticles, uh, uh, we synthesized the nanoparticles from the uh, ficus and other directa indica also, because always these plants are growing the nearby, sometimes uh, combinedly these plants are available in our days. So from the using of these two leaves also, we prepared the nanoparticles and uh, we tested the antimicrobial activity of the this nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles. Now the next important one is the characterization of the silver nanoparticles. For the character, once the synthesis is over, first confirmation is EV visible spectrometer, uh, spectrophotometer. So very simple way. Uh, I think even in a new uh, every lab we have uh, have the uh, UV spectrophotometer. So very simple way you can detect the formation of the nanoparticle. So if the peak found at the 4, 400 to 420 nanometer, it is an indication of the presence of the silver nanoparticles. Next, the for the confirmation of the shape, uh, scanning electron micro, microscope, for the confirmation of the shape and the size, also we can uh, uh, study with the help of the transmission electron micrograph. So like uh, XRD and FTR are also very important uh, techniques for the identity, for the confirmation of the amino groups and carboxyl group in the filtrate because the amino and carboxyl groups are very, very important for the for the binding efficacy and uh, the uh, structural stability of the nanoparticles. So in this figure, you can see the different shape of the nanoparticles like triangle, spherical, rod shape, Okay, and a different part, part, a different shape of the nanoparticles synthesized from the different uh, part, uh, parts of the plants, uh, uh, like uh, like a leaf and stem like that. This the the synthesized nanoparticles were tested for their antibacterial efficacy, including like uh, uh, like uh, various bacterial strains are used for the antibacterial efficacy of the nanoparticles, like E. coli. Pseudomonas, Bacillus, and Staphylococcus. So these nanoparticles, like uh, zero, uh, point, uh, 100 microliters to 200 microliters, even you can take even 25 microliters to uh, 100 microliters with the different concentrations. So uh, with addition of the nanoparticles into the medium, which contain the which loaded already preloaded with the uh, any uh, like uh, bacterial strains like E. coli or Pseudomonas or any other strains. So after incubation in incubator at 37 degree temperature, after incubation, so you can see the, the formation of the zone surrounding of the, the filtrate. So it is an indication of the antibacterial efficacy of the silo nanoparticles. In our study, we got very good antibacterial efficacy of silo nanoparticles. So starting from uh, like uh, uh, 0.52 to 2.2 2 centimeters inhibition zone we got. So that's why our nanoparticles have very good antibacterial activity uh, compared to the other nanomaterials. You can see the clear vision of the nanoparticles with the different zone of inhibitions. So starting from 15 microliters to 100 microliters. Then this is about the uh, like other uh, uh, nanoparticles, like other uh, the uh, isolated from the various uh, uh, plants. So this is also shows the very good antibacterial antibacterial efficacy against the pathogenic bacteria. Then dye decoloration also. So these nanoparticles have the very good biocatalytic activity against the dyes. Generally, the dyes where we can get the dyes, no. Generally, uh, the textile waste or the, they, they can uh, even textile industry, you know, they are using the different natural and synthetic dyes for the preparation of the cloth, for the dyeing process. Similarly, what they are doing, you know, they are discharging this waste into the nearby the uh, rivers or they can dump onto the soil also. Ultimately, what happens, these dyes, aromatic dyes, they can cause the pollution. The microbial population also uh, slow, uh, also decreased in the, in, the, in the soil also. When the microbial population uh, decreases in the uh, soil or lowered in the soil, automatically the cell cycle, like uh, cell, uh, like phosphorus cycle and carbon cycle, also reduce. You know, so it is, leads to the contamination or soil pollution. So how you, you are going to decolorize the dye with our nanoparticle? We can decolorize the nanoparticle, uh, decolorize the such type of the dyes. So we tested the decoloration of the nano uh, the dyes with our nanoparticles with the different con concentration of the nanoparticles. We tested the dye, dye, dye decoloration with increasing the concentration and incubation time. The decoloration also 
improved. The percentage of the decoloration also improved, even up to the hundred percent result of decoloration. So, for example, bromothermal, bromothermal blue, and the uh, uh, rose bengal, like the different dyes are used for the dye decoloration. The next important one is mechanism of the how the nanoparticle in uh, kill are integrated with the or uh, integrated with the DNA and RNA. How the nanoparticle kill the bacteria? This is very very important. Our mechanism of the nanoparticles on the battle. So, see, the, just I mentioned, no, silver nanoparticle size is very, very important. If the size is very, very less, this nano, like uh, below 5 nanometer or 3 nanometer, this nanop nanoparticle, they can easily enter into the pass into the cytoplasm of the bacterium and it can enter into the, it can bind with the DNA and RNA or ribosomes. They can act as a chelating agents. So when, when act as a chelating agent, the entire the DNA replication, transcription, translation stop. Ultimately, the cell will be dead. If the, there is no replication, no uh, transcription, no translation, no protein synthesis. So ultimately, the cell will be dead. This is the mechanism of the how the, uh, the bacteria or fungi inactivated by the nanoparticles. So sometimes even nanoparticles, they can bind with the, the cell wall of the bacteria. 70 ribosomes of uh, 70 of ribosomes of the bacteria because the bacterial cytoplasm consisting of 70 ribosomes, eukaryotic cell consisting of 80 ribosomes. You no, know? so these 70 ribosomes also the, 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 uh, they can collaborate with or the nanoparticles are integrated or blocked with the ribosomes. Sometimes they can bind with the RNA. So ultimately, the cell will be. So sometimes the nanoparticle, if we uh, coated on the surface of the membrane. So this is got embedded, no? If you can embed the nanoparticles on the membrane, all polythene sheet, okay? So uh, if the bacteria or fungi or any bound on the surface of the membrane, so what happened, the AG plus or vapors, they can integrate and they can uh, vaporize and the cell wall will be break, ultimately the cell will be die. So ultimately it will be killed, no? This is one of the mechanism depend up the if the nanoparticles are in the film formation so if even we can use as a uh, as a embedding as a, we can prepare the nanoparticle in the embedding process also in nowadays various uh, materials are uh, consumables are available in nowadays uh, nanoparticle uh, coated combs and polythene sheet or material any uh, number we can see in the even household also so this is about the formation of the nanoparticles in the embedded mechanism then the, the properties of the nanoparticles, the mechanism and examples of the nanoparticles, like uh, just I mentioned, like not only silver, even gold and magnesium oxide, copper oxide and al aluminum, titanium oxide and various nanoparticles also, have the, they can act as a chelating agent, they can inhibit the growth of the bacteria and fungi. So just I mentioned the mechanism, they can act as a chelating agent, they can interact with the proteins and they can inhibit the enzymes, enzyme function, they can act as a coagulate and uh, like that. Then the antiviral, particularly antiviral activity, you know, the viruses are very small. Later I will, I can explain about the, the virus, uh, the structure and shape of the virus, how the nanoparticle integrate with the viruses and how the virus will be inactivated also. See the antiviral properties, for example, this nanoparticle, if the size is very, very less compared to the virus, viruses are very small, you no, know, even nanometer level. If the, if the nanoparticles are very less, like uh, below 5 nanometers, if the nano, uh, this nanoparticle, they can integrate with the spikes of the nano, uh, viruses and they can, they can bind with the DNA and RNA of the viruses also. They can uh, block the, and uh, they can block the attachment and uh, the block the replication and blocking of the viral attachment on the cell surface. And antifung, even, uh, not only, the, even HIV also, uh, we reported, uh, this is a very small nanoparticle which inactivate the virus cell like HIV also. Uh, likewise, the nano, this nanoparticle, it can, they can inactivate the viruses also based on the binding of the, the spikes and the proteins and the protein coat or the, they can act as integration, they can uh, act as a chelating agent in the DNA and RNA of the viruses. Then antifungal activity also. Some nanoparticles, they can inhibit the fungus also because they can disturb the, the, uh, they can disrupt the, the cell membrane uh, and they can uh, the, uh, they can integrate they can pass through the pores of the fungi also ultimately the cell will be lysed then uh, this is our our work in our lab uh, we synthesize the nanoparticle using the various uh, 
uh, fungi like uh, a nigger uh, uh, aspergillus flavus encilium and agaricus also and different types of the nano silver nanoparticles and the size also you can see the very small size starting from 3 to 37 nanometer 20 to 45 nanometers and up to 40 and up to 60 nanometers only very very below 100 only so if the nanoparticle size is below 100 it has very good efficacy compared to the other size of the nanoparticle more than 100 so the shape of the nanoparticles also very important like the spherical then uh, uh, the rod shaped nanoparticles also we, uh, we achieved the sum of the nanoparticles like antibacterial activity against e coli bacillus staphylococcus and other uh, uh, pathogenic bacteria also tested for the nano, uh, for the antimicrobial efficacy not only uh, bacteria even uh, we use it the some of the uh, plants also like uh, it is called phytomediated biosynthesis of silicon nanoparticles like uh, piper uh, piper betel osmium olive seeds and various plants not only three even uh, we have we, more than 25 plants who use it for the synthesis of the nanoparticles uh, not only silver even the copper zinc and other uh, nanoparticles also the even in this method also in the from the plants also we achieved nearly 3 to 37 nanoparticles and up maximum is 50 nanometers uh, even this is also having the the nanoparticle having the different uh, shape like triangle spherical and other uh, shape of the nanoparticles and antimicrobial activity of the uh, with uh, other uh, like uh, antibacterial uh, styles uh, you can see the the shape of the nanoparticles you no know? like uh, the very small uh, 3 nanometer to the 50 nanometers size of the nanoparticles which having the different shape and the size like spherical shape triangle rod shaped uh, even uh, hexagonal shape also uh, nanoparticles these are the real images of our work uh, uh, connected in our uh, in our lab and this is also published in very good channel also so this is about the uh, antifungal efficacy of the silo nanoparticles uh, for the stem rot root rot uh, disease in the groundnut no so all of you know about the groundnut uh, and stem rot in the groundnut stem rot and root rot disease is, uh, is a common so we isolated the fungi uh, from the groundnut shells and uh, cultivated in the medium after the cultivation the fungus will separated and it was grown in the medium and uh, the they the same fungus uh, uh, grown in the pda medium after incubation no? so up to five to seven days uh, the silo nanoparticles are loaded before the incubation into the medium after incubation the zone of inhibition also calculated you can see the very good antifungal activity efficacy of the nanoparticles uh, even root rot and stem rot uh, disease in the uh, RHS hypogea. So this is one of the very, very important uh, work uh, recently done in, in my lab. So these nanoparticles are isolated or synthesized from the other data indica, uh, locally available in the plant. So this nanoparticles have very good antifungal e efficacy in broth also. So we, these nanoparticles are transported into the broth uh, at different concentrations and incubated at uh, certain intervals along with uh, fungal mat. So this fungal mat the and nanoparticles are treated as a test without uh, nanoparticles is uh, treated as a control. So up to three months there is no growth in the slant. You can see one slant having the complete mat, no? it is a control without nanoparticles. The without uh, the colored one, no? it is uh, a combination of nanoparticles for plus fungus there is no mat at all there is no growth at all it is indication of the, the mm, potent efficacy of the na, uh, nanoparticles silo nanoparticles even up to three months also there is no growth at all even still it is no growth at all it indicates the silo nanoparticles having the very good antifungal efficacy on the pathogenic fungi then antiviral activity being a faculty in virology uh, uh, we have uh, some facilities in our lab like uh, we are doing uh, the plant viruses and uh, some animal viruses like embryonic detect but not uh, uh, other human viruses so we, uh, the same nanoparticles uh, i tested for the antiviral efficacy of the uh, particularly some viruses like uh, bacteria pauses then um, ND, uh, nuclear polyterase virus and NDV virus, Susbenia mosaic viruses. 
So um, let me introduce about the virus. Okay, the brief in introduction about the virus. So what is the virus? Virus is nothing but uh, it is a obligative intracellular parasite. So virus originated from the Latin is poison. Okay, the first virus discovered was the tobacco mosaic disease virus (TME) in 1890s. So it is distinguished from the bacteria by being a filterable agent in early 1900. The tobacco mosaic virus was isolated and purified and observed in the electron microscope. The so Stanley crystallized the tobacco mosaic virus. So Bezirinko worked on the the tobacco mosaic virus also. So you can see the symptoms of the uh, the tobacco mosaic virus. No, you can see the mosaic uh, symptoms like that, and it is uh, healthy. Then the what are the characteristics of the viruses? Viruses are the acellular or infectious agents. These are, these are the obligate intracellular parasites. The genetic material may be either DNA or RNA. The replication is directed by viral nucleic acid within a cell. Cannot divide by binary fission or mitosis. The lack of the genes and enzymes necessary for the energy production. It is depend upon the they are depend upon the host cell ribosomes because they can't in outside they can't replicate. No, they depend on the any host either like the plant, animal, or anything like animal pauses, zoo pauses, like bacteria pauses, depend upon the host range, no? viruses are various. No? Like that, uh, next to the composition of the virus, various viruses are very small, very limited, no? because the very small one, it is a, a combination of uh, the protein coat and the nucleic acid. The nucleic acid may be either DNA or RNA and protein coat. Because the capsid is called, it is capsid is nothing but it is a protein coat made up of many protein subunits like capsomeres. Capsomere proteins may be identical, uh, they, uh, identical or different. The genetic material may be just I mentioned no, either RNA or DNA. Sometimes SSRNA, single stranded RNA, double stranded RNA, or SSDNA or double stranded DNA, but not both, either, either RNA or DNA. The nucleic capsid, capsid plus genetic material. For example, the uh, uh, size of the viruses, the viruses have the different sizes like 20 nanometer to 500 nanometers, 12 nanometer to 300 nanometer, from, uh, even up to 2000 nanometer also like rod shake, uh, rod like uh, uh, viruses, like uh, uh, different uh, types of viruses like uh, mimi virus, parovirus, like uh, the viral genome ranges from just I mentioned, no? the, uh, it is in the starting from uh, uh, nanometer to the millimeter. You can see the, the different uh, shape of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the shape and the size of the viruses. For example, bacteria pause, adenovirus, bacteria pauses, bacteria pauses, which are in the 24 nanometer, the polio virus, 30 nanometer, the 225 nanometers of bacteria pause. Compared to the bacteria E. coli, you, know, you can see very, very small. The viruses are very small. So they can attach and they can infect even bacteria also. The viruses are very uh, even equivalent to the nanometer also. That's why it is called uh, VLPs, virus like nanoparticles. We can treat as a, even protein coat also, we can treat as a nanoparticles. No? That's why now it is also emerging field, VLPs, virus like nanoparticles. Okay. So these nanoparticles, also, these viruses having the different uh, size and shape and uh, depend upon the nucleic acid, different types of the viruses like DNA, RNA viruses, SSRNA, DSRNA, like that. Okay. So you can the this is the uh, you can see the viral genome organization, the genetic material just I mentioned no, either RNA or DNA, SSRNA, DSRNA. For example, you can see the how the uh, nucleic acid is arranged or packed within the protein coat. So nucleic acid and the genome, for example, tobacco mosaic virus TME, it appears like a actually the RNA appears like a spherical, but uh, eventually it, it form like a rod-like structure because the nucleic uh, the protein coat and capsid also surrounded as uh, 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 on the, the uh, D RNA. You can see the comparison between the cellular and the genome and the viral genome. No? You can see the, the viral genome 2 to, uh, 2 to 200 kilobyspeds and the cellular genome 3 into 10 to 4 of 9 bispeds, 30,000 proteins and mass and with 90% of non-coding genes are there. So just I mentioned like different types of the genomes like SS, uh, DSRNA, uh, DSDNA like that. Then the, the basic virus structure, uh, just I mentioned the viruses are like either DNA virus and RNA viruses, naked virus and enveloped virus. 
naked virus means, for example, RNA or DNA plus capsid protein. Nucleo, it is called nucleocapsid. It is called naked capsid virus. The naked, along the even enveloped virus means naked capsid plus lipid membranes. This combination is called enveloped viruses. So you can see the the different uh, viruses. For example, helical virus, polyhedral virus, enveloped virus, like a T two pass virus. Then bacteria passes, T one passes, like the influenza virus, adenovirus, tobacco mosaic virus. So you have the different uh, shape and the size of the nanoparticles. So only thing is the the protein coat and the nucleic acid. Sometimes membrane lipids also, membrane salt, enveloped membrane also present in the. It is called capsule. No? For example, SSDNA virus. SSDNA virus for a very small genome, two to seven kilo base pairs. Like there is no envelope, predominantly icosahedral capsid. Then uh, DS DNA virus like HPV and IHV. Genome sizes varies from five to 1,180 kilo base pairs. Uh, uh, unfragmented genomes, both linear and circular. Uh, no D no DS DNA virus known to the infect the plants. For example, pause, uh, bacteria passes. Then DS RNA, double stranded RNA viruses, they utilize the RNA dependent polymerases, icosahedral, for example, uh, Rio virus is the example for that one. Then SSRNA, single stranded RNA virus, this group includes some of the at least very uh, dangerous dis viruses like Ebola and influenza. Viruses. So, this is about the, some of the uh, uh, types of the viruses. So, th this, this is about the brief information of the viruses. So, our the silver nanoparticles were tested for the antiviral efficacy. So, uh, the already we tested the antibacterial efficacy and uh, then antifungal and dye decoloration, anti larval also we tested. So, the, the same nanoparticles were tested for the antiviral also. So, particularly uh, in our lab, we are maintaining like uh, Susbenia mosaic virus, uh, suspend, which infect the Susbenia plants. So for this also, uh, we tested for the antiviral efficacy. The nanoparticle, first the viruses are separated from the, the Susbenia, Susbenia plant, which having the symptoms. The viruses are separated from the uh, leaf, from the symptoms leaf. Then the, the viruses are, uh, are separated and treated and separated in the buffer. Along with the virus, we treated the nanoparticles with a different concentration and incubated uh, this uh, virus, the nanoparticle, after certain interval. The, uh, after some incub uh, incubation, the nanoparticles along with the viruses are again infected into the healthy plant and incubated for some time. So up to 15 days, we tested this, uh, uh, this experiment, uh, maintained the experiment up to the 15 days. So with uh, every day, we are testing the uh, the uh, health of the plant, the and uh, any symptoms are arising in the healthy and uh, inoculated uh, plant also. Surprisingly, in healthy means only viral treated, virus treated uh, plant got infection, but inoculated, nano treated plant uh, delayed. Him. We observe the symptoms in delay. Even after ten days only, we observe the symptoms. So it is indication this nanoparticle inhibit the inhibit the uh, even viruses also, it stopped the multiplication in the uh, plant also. It is an indication of the antiviral efficacy of the silo nanoparticles. The same experiments conducted in the tobacco mosaic uh, TMU also in uh, when I was working in the Athens Agriculture University in 2017. So the nanoparticles and even bioactive compounds also tested for the antiviral efficacy against the tobacco mosaic virus. There even uh, we isolated the mRNA from the tobacco infected plants there is no rna uh, we surprisingly we got there is no rna in the agrogel it is an indication of the antiviral efficacy of the silver nanoparticles later uh, we tested the the antiviral efficacy in the bacteria pause also all of you know bacteria pause means the virus which infect the bacteria equally okay the virus generally uh, the uh, this bacteria pauses uh, present in the uh, sewage water we collected the sewage water and uh, separated the viruses from the sewage water. The viruses titrates are separated and treated the nanoparticles with different concentrations. Up to after incubation, certain incubation like one half an hour or one hour, the nano this nanoparticle suspension was again uh, loaded on the medium with having the bacteria, E. coli bacteria. 
and incubated up to incubated in incubator for 37 degree temperature. So up to 24 to 48 hours. After incubation, so we got the, the even the what is the indication no? the formation of the plaques are the indication of the indication of the presence of the viruses. Generally, the bacteria forms which infect the bacteria, the cell will be lysed, no bacterial cell will be lysed. It is it is called all of you know about the lytic and lysogenic cycle. Briefly, I can explain about the lytic and lysogenic cycle. When the bacteria, when the bacteria pass or virus lands on the surface of the bacterial cell wall, okay. So what happens? A, a hole will be made with the help of the enzyme lysozyme enzyme. Through the hole, through the hole, uh, the DNA, the pass DNA get entered into the cytoplasm of the bacteria. So immediately what happened? The entire DNA. The, the bacterial genome will be lysed or the after incubation the what happened in the incubation time like replication transcription translation the entire metabolism or the cell the bacterial metabolism is controlled by the viruses only so we can get the variants so these variants are nothing but uh, premature premature variants or virus particles these virus particles again they can come out from the cytoplasm due to the rupturing of the enzyme the, by the action of the enzyme, lysogen enzyme. These again the viruses they can they can uh, infect to the the nearby the bacteria. This is called uh, lytic cycle. So ultimately, what happened if the bacterial colonies are lysed? You no, know, a clear zone, a empty zone or a hollow zone will be formed. This zone, this place, this is called plaques. You no, know. this plaque formation is indication of the lysis of the bacteria or bacterial colonies. So. If the nanoparticles are killed or inactivated the genome of the virus, ultimately no virus can enter into the cytoplasm of the bacteria. That's why there is no lysis of the bacteria at all. So no plaques formation. This is the indication of the antiviral efficacy of the silver nanoparticle. So we observed the, this plaque formation. We can see the with increasing of the nanoparticle concentration, the plaque number also reduced, no? So if the colonies are more, bacterial colonies are more, so it is indication of the if nano, the viruses are inactivated, inactivated. If the concentration is more, no? If the nanoparticle concentration is more, even the plaque number also reduced. You can see the number also. Number. So it is indication of the, indication of the, the antiviral efficacy of the silver nanoparticles. Next to, the other uh, then the experiment also conducted in our lab uh, because uh, with the uh, help of the veterinary university uh, we, we given the sample uh, the nanoparticle sample to them uh, they conduct the ndv virus also uh, like uh, uh, this ndv virus which infect the animals particularly you know so it is a one of the uh, animal virus okay so with increasing the uh, because this is conducted with uh, embryonated egg you know embryonated eggs and chick, chick embryonated eggs with, with uh, different concentration of the nanoparticles. Uh, uh, after separation of the, the viruses from the infected eggs, no? so the nanoparticles are treated into the eggs and after some incubation, so we got the infection level is very limited. So it is also indication of the antiviral efficacy. This test also conducted in the uh, veterinary university with help of the, uh, the some of the uh, uh, persons, uh, the collaborators in the veterinary university. Okay, so this is about the antiviral efficacy of the silver nanoparticles. Next, some of the other advantages of the nanoparticles, not only antivirus, uh, antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal, and uh, anti-cancer like that, no? So we can, uh, nowadays, uh, these products are available in market, like nanocoated masks, nanoported chips like uh, you can see the uh, other dyes also other uh, even colors also dyes also treat, uh, loaded with or treated with the nanoparticles even if the na copper nanoparticles are nowadays they nowadays available in the uh, copper coated uh, nanoparticles uh, uh, the uh, mask for the control of the viruses because the when the virus enter into the mask you no know, but immediately the nanoparticles in, infect the it can uh, Inhibit the uh, in, uh, they can stop the, the entry of the viruses. Even uh, with the help of our collaborator uh, in chemistry, uh, we developed one biosensor also with the help of our uh, this silver nanoparticles. So these nanoparticles are uh, they, uh, I taken the 
tell for them because I provided the nanoparticles. They are the uh, expert in the uh, biosensors in our department in our uh, university. So they developed the biosensors, the nano coated, uh, silver coated biosensors uh, for the detection of uh, any toxic metals or toxic components in the blood or the toxic component or uh, pesticide on the vegetables also. So this is the mechanism for the preparation of the uh, biosensors on the surface of the electrode. We can uh, uh, we can load the nanoparticles along with uh, uh, the gel. Okay, already gel loaded with the nanoparticles. So these are the some of the publications I published very good uh, journals uh, which having the more than five impact factor also. This is the first uh, paper published in 2010. Uh, 2010. So in this paper, we reported a very small nanoparticle. The size is very, very less, 3 to, 3 to 30, 10 nanometer only. You can see the 3 to 30 nanometer. If the size is very, very less, it can inhibit the virus also. So this is the first report we reported uh, uh, for the antiviral efficacy of the silver nanoparticles. Uh, uh, then uh, the second one is the, uh, this is also very good uh, paper published in the NGI microbial technology, which have very good impact factor, uh, collaboration, collaborated with the uh, uh, chemistry people. Uh, then uh, uh, this is also one of the very good paper, RSV, uh, analytical paper, analytical methods in published in that one. So like various, more than uh, 50 papers are published in uh, uh, particularly nanoparticle related uh, work uh, other than also published in bioactive compounds also uh, some papers you can see some of the publications even at even not only bacteria and fungi and even plants even we isolated the nanoparticles from actinomyces also the marine actinomyces from the actinomyces marine actinomyces also we isolated the we prepared the uh, synthesized the nanoparticles and tested the antimicrobial efficacy and published in very good journals also so this is about some of the information about the nanoparticles uh, this is about the or the uh, because uh, the recent i received the uh, world scientist uh, rank uh, from the ad world ranking so got very good uh, impact papers and scores also more than um, h index and uh, i index and uh, citations more than 4000 citations so uh, this is about uh, my work so if you have any doubts and clarification if you, you please ask me and you, you can share any uh, uh, messages or mails to me with this number uh, this email and you can contact me thank you very much for giving this opportunity uh, if you have any queries or clarification, you please ask me. Hello. Hello. Audible, sir? Huh? Am I audible, sir? Ah, okay, audible, audible. Sir. Okay, sir. Your presentation is really very knowledgeable and uh, it's really very uh, great for me to heard about your presentation. So my query is that there are some sort of the disease like uh, HIV. So okay. is the incurable. So is it possible that by the help of nanoparticle? Uh, or nano medicine uh, uh, can we cure such type of disease sir actually uh, not proved sir but what i think you know if the nanoparticle size is very less this nanoparticle for example below 5 nanometer this nanoparticle size is very less they can bind 120 glyco uh, gp of the hiv when the glycoprotein is inactive uh, if orientation is changed automatically the virus it cannot uh, uh, enter into the host, no. Our assumption only, sir, it's not proved. Yet. But we can prepare the mask. If the this nanoparticle, if, if you coat on the mask, no, uh -huh. definitely nano, the viruses can stop. The, only this is assumption, sir. Okay, because there are uh, lots of uh, uh, proteins is in the intrinsic region of the HIV. Yes, the yes. main problem so main problem is that uh, first of all we have to uh, invite the uh, process of the um, protein activity of the hiv in the outer level as well as inner level and the uh, nuclear level okay. so it is it is not possible uh, that uh, uh, we can cure the disease with the help of uh, to design the some nano based medicines no no sure sir it is correct actually 
there is no evidence even nanoparticle even sometimes no even this nanoparticles also they you can you can act as a toxic also so if the okay. concentration is if you use the very least low concentration they may be useful but directly okay. sometimes even other the nearby cells may be affect no okay okay yeah but uh, we, indirectly uh, we can indirectly we can use as a uh, we can control like air uh, or water or uh, any other okay and uh, my another next question is that hmm. is it possible that uh, there are some sort of the cross reacting disease because i am working in the in this field okay so there okay. are one example is that if the uh, we are recruiting a patient of the leprosy hmm. uh, okay so we have to simultaneously check the, uh, the whether this patient is having hiv positive or not so in my case i recruited 500 uh, uh, patients of okay. the leprosy as well as uh, tb so okay. most of the time uh, a patient uh, who is suffering from the leprosy they are having a uh, less number of the HIV positive, but in mm -hmm. case of the TB, more mm -hmm. number of patient is the HIV positive. So, okay. is it uh, 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 can we see that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the dinoparticle based therapy is uh, uh, alternate uh, to cure such type of cross reacting disease? But there is no evidence, sir. Actually, okay, but okay. Hope, hope for the best in future. But not okay. uh, this metal, sir. You can use the other nanoparticles like uh, zinc oxide. And okay. other nano and non metallic particles you can use, sir. Metallic okay. nano particles sometimes they can damage the nearby cells also. But okay. non metallic, like zinc oxide and other uh, nano, uh, even sometimes dice also you can use that along with nano particles. We can uh, nowadays available no embedded dice uh, treat, uh, okay. loaded with nano particles. Okay. They are widely using in uh, drug delivery system. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So any qu any questions from audience? Because I am not uh, given the more information, but uh, in our lab we test very uh, even not only this viruses also other viruses also we testing uh, still going on, uh, but uh, not uh, we are going to publish that paper also uh, and to take the patents also. One more important uh, thing I want to explain: even this nanoparticles are uh, recently we we developed some nano bio fertilizers for example manganese oxide manganese magnesium then copper even silver also these nanoparticles are uh, treated with uh, bio compost with the bio compost why because our campus having the huge amount of the waste you no know, like leaf waste these leaf waste are collected and they are deposited on the particular location and loaded with uh, and treated with uh, some bacteria for example uh, bacterial consortium which can degrade the waste like uh, polymer no? uh, this is the plant leafy nothing but uh, the cell wall made up of uh, cellulose no it is nothing but lignocellulose so some enzymes from the microorganisms they can synergetically act on the cellulose and eventually they can degrade to the glucose this glucose also alternately you can use as the feed and food for the animals okay that is a different system and fermentation you can do so this that manure no or the this manure the leaf manure also we treated the this nanoparticle like uh, nano bio nano fertilizers like uh, manganese magnesium like that no these particles also test uh, incubated and inoculate and uh, tested for the plant growth like uh, plant uh, stem height and leaf diameter root height uh, root length and root to, uh, uh, and uh, that uh, strength also so uh, surprisingly you got very good result even the the treated the nano bio fertilizer treated plant have the very good uh, height and yield also compared to the non treated uh, now this compost or nano bio manure white we are using for the as a nano fertilizer in our campus so this is all of the novel uh, uh, work we are doing in our in in our campus. So okay. we are going to take the patent also for this work. Okay, sir. Uh, but more question is that. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask? Yeah. Tell me. Sir. Okay. You can yeah, ask. Actually, uh, actually, uh, I have have uh, some idea regarding the nano cellulose. Can we uh, form the nano cellulose uh, by the help of uh, cow dung? Yes, sir. Nano cellulose is very interesting topic actually. Mm -hmm. uh but only thing is uh, the mechanism uh, 
cellulose actually it is actually cellulose is a um, the cell wall the plant cell wall is a, is a poly cellulose is polymer no uh, uh -huh, it has right. the uh, glucose linked by one four glycosidic bonds okay uh -huh. but nano cellulose is somewhat some microorganisms they can uh, produce the nano cellulose uh, so uh -huh. the synthesis may be somewhat I don't actually excel the uh, information about this thing, but my PhD complete work is cellulose degradation only. But uh, oh. I seen recently some of the papers, uh, papers uh, they are they are preparing the nano cellulose also. Actually, sir, uh, main thing is that I am from the UP, so uh, there are some sort of the funding. Uh, they will told that if you write a proposal on the nano cellulose uh, came from the cow dung. So okay. just uh, I just wanted to know that is it possible that. Uh, uh, can be uh, uh, is it uh, is it feasible that uh, can be synthesize the nano cellulose from sure. the cow sure sir so definitely we can synthesize no problem at all already okay. but there is no time for me actually i am also i have an idea for the synthesis of okay. nano cellulose but there is no time we are concentrating only this nano biofertilizers nano particles their applications in different ways like uh, nano, uh, uh, not only this nano fertilizers, even as antifungal and antiviral and antimicrobial agents. Uh -huh. Yes. So, uh, can you please tell me that uh, how much, uh, like, estimated value to uh, design a small scale of laboratory for the nano cellulose from the cow dung? Sir, uh, uh, okay, uh, you send your uh, email, sir. I can send the okay. information, more information. Okay, 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 okay. 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 You okay. can contact me this number, sir. You can uh, you can contact or you can send uh, me anything related. Sure, sure. I will but, contact uh, you. But there, there is no, there is a chance. You can send the nano cell. No problem. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Any query, any doubts or any queries from the good evening, sir. Ah, good evening, good evening, sir. Very nice presentation. Yes, so, can we know a little use of these nanoparticles in diagnostics, sir, of any other diseases? So, why can't sir? You can detect no, like uh, just I mentioned, no? like biosensors, no. Nano gold is widely using for the uh, detection of the viruses also. Even okay. nano copper, nano gold, just I mentioned, look, like biosensors. Okay, Biosensor okay. is, we can detect, no? Okay. Now it is available, in the kits also available. Nano gold okay. is widely using for the detection of the virus, even pathogen, plant pathogens also. So if you want to design a, a diagnostic kit based on these nanoparticles, how much it will cost, sir, approximately? No, no, cost is, so depend upon the uh, procedure, depend upon the, the tree, even maybe, if you have very good facility, we can uh, prepare even uh, of below even five to six months old, you know. Okay, okay. For Direct. this, but if you want to, uh, uh, I don't know what type of sense uh, kit you need, but depend like, upon like the, uh, NFS, lateral flow, say lateral flow, say okay, okay, or, okay. Uh, liquid chromatography, ah. like something okay, like okay. color chromatography. Okay, okay, okay. For LIS and even uh, this uh, sensors preparation. Uh, already we proved, sir. We, we okay. developed nano just as you know, uh, show sir. this nano biosensors, no? Biosensors. Uh, yes, uh, uh, biosensors. Easily you can prepare. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would thank like you. to thank Dr. G. Narasimha, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Virology, Sri Kadeshwara University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh, India. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation, sir. Let's meet in tomorrow's session. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you.